Hey everyone, it's Kat with CatWarnPhoto.com and it's been three weeks since San Diego has implemented the shelter in place due to the current state of affairs. So I figured what better time to show you how I take and edit creative, moody self-portraits um, that are also kind of like a fine art feel as well um, from the privacy of your own home. So before I go any further though, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Click on that bell notification as well to be notified immediately after I post um, a video. I do post these videos every Sunday, thinking about doing some more. So if you like what you see and you want some more footage, just uh, comment below. All right, so let's get started. Before starting, you'll need the following for your photo shoot. First, you'll need a camera. I shoot with an old Nikon D5000, which I've had for years. It served its purpose and it has been a great camera for me. You'll also need a remote clicker. This most of the time helps with autofocus. You can get pretty affordable universal ones just about anywhere, but don't fret if you don't have one today. You can easily put on your camera's self timer and program the amount of photos it takes at any given time. Utilize your camera's manual focus in this situation. Now also, if you want consistency and good flow with all of your photos, it does help if you have a purpose to your images. Creating a story helps to set that mood and it also helps you choosing different scenes for your photo shoot. For this first scene, I chose my living room. I wanted light, fresh, and dreamy images with a lot of natural light. After I determined the scene, I then walked around with my camera to determine what angle I wanted. Do this before placing it on the tripod, and this will save you time in the long run. I also already had a few poses in mind, but by planning your poses before you shoot, you'll already know what looks good and what doesn't, again, saving you some time. Once you have a good camera perspective with good poses, start shooting. But one more thing, don't forget to check your work after. You want to make sure that these first few photos are in focus. Unfortunately, this might require you to do a little bit more running around, but at least you'll get a few squats and lunges in. All right, scene one is finally through. Um, as you saw, we were shooting from above, looking down. Um, that's always very flattering to the subject, whether you're, you're you know, shooting another person or actually yourself. So we're going to maintain that perspective with scene two now. Um, the only thing that we're changing for scene two is the color scheme. Scene one was more oranges and um, a little bit of greens. We're going to keep the greens, but we're going to just do green and creams now. So I got some cream pillows and uh, little accent pieces here um, that I'm gonna try and incorporate some bokeh effect with that. So, I don't know, wish me luck. Okay, everyone, now to the latter half of the work, post-processing. Now, there are so many mediums out there to choose from. You have Lightroom, Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, the list goes on. But whatever editing software you choose for processing, make sure that you do practice. Now, first, be aware of your color balance and tinting. Unless you are making it obvious that you are being deliberate with your color casting and actually want extreme warm or cool tones, Make sure your colors are balanced and neutral. Too green, too pink, too warm, and or too cool images may not look bad to the average person. But if your color temperature and color tint are well balanced, this will add a pop of flair and sophistication to your images. And okay, second, play around with slide bars. In other words, when you're editing your photos in Lightroom, for instance, make it a habit to push each slide bar to opposite ends of the spectrum, then, work your way back to the middle and tweak your photos how you see fit. By starting from opposite ends, you might stumble across a pretty cool edit that you wouldn't have otherwise thought of or even had the courage to experiment with. Third, and this goes without saying, detail is everything. Really zoom in on the image and make sure that you're cloning and healing your blemishes and other imperfections. Sometimes you might need to remove something from the image altogether. And last but not least, develop your signature style. Now, I'm still playing around with mine, but I realize the more I shoot, the more I tend to now lean towards a more natural and grainy image. 
I used to love incorporating flash photography into my photos, and sometimes I still do for bolder effects. But now I find myself these days experimenting more with that fresh lit glow and some split tones for dreamy effects. All right, guys, that's a wrap. So thanks so much for tuning into my channel. I hope you were able to gain some additional insight into sprucing up your photography game at home and um, while maintaining your sanity and your amusement during these really pressing times. So always keep on growing, self-develop, and um, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Click on that bell notification again. Um, that way you can be notified every single time that I post these videos every Sunday for you. So thanks so much. Have a good uh, Sunday, guys. Bye.